Hello, everybody, and welcome to the International Institute of Family Development. What an opportunity that we have before us here today to celebrate and talk about Black history uh, and building Black wealth. The state of uh, Africans in, in the Americas. This is a really uh, great opportunity. We have a star-studded uh, team with us today that will come in and have a conversation about what it will take in order to get the diaspora moving together in unison uh, in an entrepreneurial spirit, talk about the opportunities that we have before us in order to uh, uplift Africa and Africans, talk about the opportunities along the value chain and production line uh, from coffee to agriculture. So without further ado, I definitely want to bring our keynote speaker on today with us to have a conversation. Our keynote speaker is a lawyer by profession, uh, Madam Kara Baku, uh, who works with the African Rural and Agriculture Credit Association, AFRACA, uh, and holds more than 12 years of leadership and development experience in agriculture and programming. Additionally, she facilitates and moderates a training of trainers in the agriculture value chain and digitization of financial services. Her resume, her work far exceeds the small introduction that I could ever give her. Her passion for Africa, for African people, and creating opportunities uh, far it exceeds uh, this small introduction. And without further ado, our keynote speaker will come and share some words of thoughts, highlighting Africans abroad, uh, Africans in the continent, that have inspired her and her growth and talk through the opportunities we have right now in agriculture and coffee production that she is overseeing in Africa, uh, uh, Africa, her organization, and, uh, and lead us in the direction of where the, for the panel that will be following her, uh, where we should focus our energies on uh, with, the, with the farmers and producing opportunities for, in the entrepreneurial spirit. Madam Carol? Yes, good morning or good evening from good. wherever you find yourself. Uh, that's a Viola, that's a very big introduction. I don't know if I can wear the, those hats that you have attributed to me. And uh, I thank you, it's an honor to be here. Uh, when I read the flyer today, I was, um, I didn't know because I noticed that we had ambassadors, we had CEOs, we had different uh, field of people that are working towards the betterment of the continent. I actually didn't prepare a speech, but I just wanted to share a few notes on the um, a way forward from where Africa stands. Uh, I am representing here the Africa Secretary General, Mr. Thomas Michel, who was not able to join the meeting because he had a previous engagement that he has taken. So I'm speaking here on his behalf and I hope I will represent well. You mentioned key words such as entrepreneurship, such as agriculture, such as youth empowerment, such as development. Africa is uh, an organization that actually evolves around uh, 100 uh, financial institutions, but including networks. So a financial institution, I would say about a bank that has clients and uh, is actually established in over 40 African countries, uh, including Morocco. So it's not only Sub-Saharan, so it's also uh, Northern Africa. So we are subdivided into six sub-region right now because we've just got in, gotten in uh, Morocco. The East, uh, where we are based, where the Secretariat is based in Nairobi, Kenya, we are being housed by the Central Bank of Kenya because we have an agreement with the Central Bank of Kenya. And uh, we are an international Pan-African organization. And I hereby represent the Department of Cooperation Multilateral Relations. 
So just to come back to the keywords that you mentioned during the introduction, if you ask me where we should put the emphasis, I will say quickly on accessibility of funding. Accessibility of funding has been a big headache for anybody who wants to get into farming, be it agriculture, entrepreneurship in Africa. You know that more than 60% or around 60, between 55 to 60% of the African continent is made of youth. And you know, as youth, when you start up your life, when we, we, we say youth, we say between 18 to, I would say 45, when you start your life, we have a serious problem in Africa when it comes to entrepreneurship, because many youth or many young people do not have the capacity to raise the funding that are necessary for their project or for the entrepreneurial uh, business. It becomes very difficult for a youth who is 25, who has no collateral, who has never gone into any business, who doesn't have a title deed, who doesn't have a car, okay, to actually start off a business. Secondly, financial institutions across the continent, Sub-Saharan Africa, which I'm very aware of, make it very difficult for the youth to access the funding because of the reason that I just mentioned earlier. So what will be the way forward? The way forward will be for African governments to push for policies to force financial institutions to support youth in their projects. What do I mean? I mean by that creating funds that will allow the youth to take part into the economic development of their countries. Of course, as we speak about the youth, we also have the less privileged who are the women that we do not have to forget. It's very difficult for women to get uh, access to finance. But I will say there are, there are a few exceptions that I'm aware of. In Kenya, for example, there is the uh, Women Finance Trust, K Kenya WFT. What do they do most? 95%, I will say 99% of their clients are basically women. And for men to go to come and get loans, they need to pass through their wives. So men cannot come directly to get access to funding. So this organization is actually supporting women in building their futures in, in supporting their businesses. So this is one of the few exceptions that I'm aware of that is actually uh, geared towards supporting women. So what we need to do, as I mentioned, we need to review our policy to make it all inclusive. We need to review the banking process, processes, I would say. Uh, but we still, uh, when, when I speak about the banking process, we have seen now for the last 10 years, we have seen that youth, for example, I will speak about East Africa, have, can have access to uh, financial uh, support through the FinTech, financial technology. It makes it easy for somebody who wants to invest into a business, who has a credit scoring, who has, who has been registered by a telco for the last five to 10 years, who can be traced, who has an ID to get finance through a digital platform. We call them financial technology, FinTech. So if you look at the last report that was made by the 
financial inclusion department here at the central bank you will notice that there are some there is a big uh, changes that is operating right now when it comes to youth and lending so it's still possible kenya has made it happen and then i think some other african countries should follow suit we i think uh, it, the same applies for a country like ghana uh, and also as well as Nigeria. So there is a growth, there is a huge growth, there is a huge appetite for youth to get money or finance through this digital platform. So states also have to come to support those policies for people to make it happen. So I didn't prepare a speech. You are fabulous. Uh, yeah, so you know from your heart, from your brain, this is something that you live every single day and trying to make sure that there is equity, that there's parity for women, for youth, and it's complicated and you have made it simple for people to understand. So I just really want to thank you for taking the time to do that um, and laying the groundwork for your panel that's coming after you to really pick up on the pieces of entrepreneurship, uh, talking more about the digital platform because we are in the 21st century and what that will take in order to bring Africa and all its people to be able to, uh, to take advantage of the opportunities that are, are simply there. I do wanna know from you, um, Carol, tell me, you have been doing this work for some time and getting into this field. As you think back on the people that inspired you, on the people that you look up to, uh, probably unknown people and probably someone that is probably known in the globe, who and or whom, as for people, uh, inspire you? Share a bit about that and how that has um, uh, helped you and motivates you to continue in your path forward as a African woman? Uh, a few years ago, I, I just want to, to share a short story on um, some farmers that I met in Mali. Mm -hmm. So these farmers, I don't know if you know Mali. Okay, Mali is classified as one of the poorest country in Africa, but yet it's, filled, it's full of gold, gas and all the natural resources that exist on earth and mali is i mean kind of i think is one million square kilometer in terms of size so it's twice the size of my country which is cameroon so i think it is a country that is full of of prospects but uh, the leadership can be the problem. Now, what I, what I gathered from my trip in Mali a few years ago was the, the ambition, the support that the community gets and give to women. Women, you know, Mali is a very dry area. Sure. Mangoes at the season of the mangoes are all over the place. They have no ways of transforming because most of the things, like all the African, most of the African countries, especially Francophone countries, get imports. Mm -hmm. They get importation of products from France, from Belgium, from the Netherlands. And these women had the will to actually get financial support. Mm -hmm. So, and you, you could see that they were ready to work, but they didn't have the financial capacity. So what we've decided as an organization was that we will create a link between those cooperatives in Mali and the cooperatives in Kenya. So the cooperatives of Mali will come to learn from the cooperative in Kenya to see how they can support those farmers and also to give them the capacity to meet development partners to have access to, uh, to, to finance. And as I'm speaking right now, Africa is working with 12,000 
farmers in Mali. Wow. Farmers in Mali. So they are scheduled to come in Nairobi this year, probably around April, with the different cooperatives that we have put, how they can add value to their product, how they can be financed to get the input, who are the development partners that they can meet in that sense. We are facilitating Africa. And these guys, let me tell you, Viola, they call you every week to check how far yeah. have we gone? Exactly. How far have we gone? Uh, and then all of a the sudden, there was a coup in Mali. So all the preparation went slow. They can't travel right now. So this is something that has actually touched my heart. And yes, yes. I, exactly. So we said that we are putting it in our most do list as Africa this year. <laughs> And we need to facilitate the funding of these 12,000 farmers. So this is one of the story that I, I can share. That is an amazing story. And I think throughout the history of people of Africa, uh, we women have done remarkable things across the globe with very little uh, resources, very little support. When I think of my mother and, you know, I think about the mothers and aunties across, how amazing we are in the Caribbean and South America, in Africa, wherever people are of African descent, they're doing and moving and shaking. There's a comment, there's a bunch of comments in the chat, but I just selected one to put on the screen. Um, and it says here, women's support in, uh, in growing their business is critical. And also Western uh, Black can also support technical know-how to push this transformation. That's absolutely correct. This opportunity that we have here today is to showcase this conversation, is to showcase Africans at home and abroad, Black Americans here in the United States, in the Caribbean islands and others, to unify and figure out what are the path pathways uh, that we can support this development work uh, for ourselves, with our brothers and sisters, to build wealth uh, from the resources that we have. So know that this conversation here is not just a talk for a talk. This conversation will move forward with a networking group of members of this team coming together and putting some real efforts on the ground that are beneficial. Uh, Ms. Baku, I want to thank you for your time here. Thank you for your lessons and your wisdom, for your inspiration. You are inspiring. I hope to be one day when I fully grow up as knowledgeable oh. <laughs> as you are. You are amazing. And thank you so much as we continue to build our relationship together between mm -hmm. Africa and the International Institute of Family Development. I look forward to creating strong impact with you. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Viola. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. So we're bringing on the rest of our panel. Uh, Carol, you're free to stay here uh, and join the panel uh, if you like. But I'm going to start bringing folks onto the screen for conversation to, uh, to show up and start this engagement here. Um, there are just a, a number of folks here that I cannot believe that said yes. Yes to this opportunity. Yes to Africa. Yes to unity. So we have a full screen of folks here. And Carol, you're there, but I am going to put you there. How about now? Welcome, everybody. Welcome to this conversation. And I am so thankful to each and every one of you for joining us. There, I am going to read your bios, but please do come in and share more about yourselves and your opportunities. Uh, we just heard some really informative information from Carol and Afraka, her organization that she is supporting. Um, the stories of the women are completely amazing uh, and the strength that we have uh, within ourselves as people of who work hard, entrepreneurial, uh, to move forward. So without further ado, we have from Ghana, Louis Afal. 
Mr. Afal leads a premier international network and think tank focused on African continental trade, APN. Based in Ghana, Mr. Afal focuses efforts globalized uh, investments that have awarded him numerous, numerous awards and appearances on BBC, CGTN, and articles penned by Mr. Afol have received recognition by the African Union for championing the course of the African Free, uh, the African Free Continental Trade Agreement on the continent. Let me tell you about my brother Lewis. He is a powerhouse. He is knowledgeable. He is moving and shaking and creating a pathway on the continent for goods to be able to be moved throughout the continent in a way that supports African trade intercontinentally. And as most of you know, moving stuff throughout the continent it has been hard. But Lewis here is has a strong network of businesses, of organizations that are working together to bring uh, Africa to life. Lewis, welcome to the conversation. Thank you, Thank you. Mr. Yao. Yao. and good afternoon to all my panelists. Fantastic. Next, we have Wafa May Alamine. I just have to pause. Every time I look at the sister, I have to pause. Mm. I get emotional. Ms. Elamine is inspired by her Sudanese culture and African roots. As a dedicated mobilizer, Wafa May has devoted her time to lead 1.7 million people, a movement around the world to end child marriage. And she saved the life of a young girl from marital rape. Ms. Elamine creates impact and climate action, clean energy, public health, human rights, through her organization of self-made roots. There's so much, so much more than I could say about this woman. She is a real life queen, a real life Kandanka. I have met one in my lifetime uh, who is doing amazing work on all fronts as a mobilizer and organizer. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful to have you here today. Wafame, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here with everybody. Thank you. Ambassador Hillary B. Davis Jr. Are you on screen, Ambassador? I see that you're there, but I don't see you here. So I'm for introductions, I'm just going to remove that and we'll go to the next. Josephat Moses. Josephat Moses. Is a brother. I I could full stop there. I could end that period there. He is the man that you call to get things done and will have your back. He is moving and doing a tremendous amount of work, not only in Kenya, but globally. Mr. Moses builds resilient communities by promoting social economic equity in Africa through a development agenda focused on research and policy change. Through the Center for African Volunteers, Mr. Moses organized the largest network of over 6,000 ready for career focused skilled continental Africans that can supplement capacity needs of local firms, national and international firms at all levels. Additionally, he is the CEO of the International Institute for Research and Agriculture focused on trade and business within the diaspora. Joseph at Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Next. He said yes. When he said yes, I think I nearly fell off my chair. Mr. Nijan, Nijawan, thank you. Mr. Nijawan is a strategic visionary who has conceived and built several technology organizations that have been acquired by Boeing, Motorola, and Qualcomm and has worked in many industries, aerospace, supply chain, logistics, manufacturing, and telecommunications. He supports entrepreneurs with a special focus on academia and serves on the board of the National Academy of Inventors. Currently launched, and he currently launched a nation, national IPC monetization program with 40 
institutions, including UC Berkeley and UCLA. Those are prestigious universities in the United States of America. The work that he is doing is outstanding, and we have so much to learn as we bridge the entrepreneurship and the conversation about entrepreneurship. Uh, he will lead that and give words of wisdom uh, to support our thinking and our development. Welcome to the panel. Thanks, Viola. It's amazing to be with this. Uh, thank you for inviting me. So we have Ambassador Carol Schmidt. I'm adding you back to the stream. And you are now right side up, my sister, right side up. Ambassador Smith is, is, has, has a demonstrated history of working in international affairs, in industry, and central banking. She is a skilled public speaker focusing on private and civil society. Welcome, Ambassador. She's representing South Africa. Thank you. I feel most welcome to be here with all these insightful people. And I am really looking forward to the conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jerome uh, Rollins is here representing Nevis. He is representing the Nevis Cultural uh, uh, Center. He is doing an amazing amount of work on his island nation in the West Indies to support tourism, to support engagement and business development and bring the diaspora home and figure out opportunities for growth and development of his nation. Jerome Rollins, welcome to the conversation. Thank you, Viola. Good to be here. Looking forward to a fruitful conversation. Fantastic. And Ambassador Andrew Ramjohn, are you here on this talk? I have not seen you. I don't want to. I, I see you. Okay. I am here. <laughs> Fantastic. Ambassador Ramjohn was the former special envoy to CARICOM and a global, and he is currently a global goodwill ambassador with expertise in finance, sustainable energy, and he has three, 31 years, 31 years of experience in the areas of project development globally. Everyone, welcome to this conversation. Welcome. Thank you kindly. Viola, I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here, here, and to learn to these good, these good here too. And I hope to enjoy a very enjoyable conversation that is fruitful. Fantastic. So laying the groundwork, the first, the first question I love to open up with is: we hear, we hear all the things wrong with Africa, the needs of Africa. Africa needs. Let's focus in with this one particular question, and this is open to everyone. What is right with Africa? What is beautiful, bountiful, and right with Africa? And this is an open opportunity for any to join in to that answer. If I, miss, if I may begin the process, Viola, I think what is right about Africa is the fact that Africa has been the breadbasket of the entire world. And I always smile and find it rather amazing when the notion is used that Africa is the poorest place or the poorest continent. However, it has the greatest amount of wealth. And so if you were to see the... The, the interesting take on that. How can the wealthiest nation be the poorest nation at the same time? And so the, the positive out of Africa is its natural resources, minerals, etc., including its human capital, and um, all that it has to offer to the rest of the world. Fabulous. I couldn't surmise that any better. So much is wonderful in, in Africa. Louis, I see a smile on your face and you're working really hard to create a pathway uh, for those raw products and, and opportunities for development and business. Tell me more about your work and, and included in that. Uh, definitely share with us uh, what's right with Africa. 
Thank you. I don't know where to start from, but from the first question, I think that I supported uh, my specialties on international trade and focus on the African continental free trade. And basically, like the way the Silicon Valley started, when we were part of the consultative process in drafting the continental free trade along the line, when I stepped down in Ghana after those travels, I decided to set up a network at the time that no one was giving me any any coin, any dime, any money. Yes. No government was there at the time to help me. I established, I had my consultancy work. I put that one aside and I started a network that I know the African Union will be slow in implementing a continental free trade. So I said, look, let me start a private led initiative to target Africa, orient them, sensitize them, advert, advocate what African continental free trade is about and what the benefit could be way, way, way ahead when even the, 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 the policy was adopted. And when we started, it wasn't easy, but within a period of two years, like what you were saying, we reached almost Africa through virtually and through other means. And our focus now is to make sure that we have three subsidiaries, women of Africa, how will women benefit from trade through this continental free trade? And how will they be financed and entrepreneurship? Then the other one is the investment. The investment, we are bringing investors from the diaspora, from everywhere into Africa through the windows of continental free trade. And this time we are focused on sectoral. We are doing it rotational. We are doing the investment event in Ghana and throughout all the 54 countries. Why? Because we believe that we have all the raw materials. We believe that we have, we have all that it takes for us to manufacture, add value, locate regional value chains in <laughs> Africa and patronize our own products and services. And so that is what my network has focused on and we are still on. We are not looking to any 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 foreigner to support us. We're not looking to anyone for us. loan. If you want to partner and collaborate, we are still moving. Now to your second question. I think that we have to look within and i want to use a practical example look i am trying to uh, start a project i call the intra-african tourism it's part of the continental free trade by this i want to make sure that i push up all the destinations of africa to the delight and patronage of africans i ask one question i be, i put an article recently i said nigeria has a very wonderful destination center called the cattle range very beautiful marvelous but i asked them how many nigerians will patronize going there compared to outside nigeria to pay hard foreign exchange currency how many will do that and who are we waiting for to do to do that for us and so it, we have to change our 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 culture of of, of preferences and pay the price now so that we can have a good posterity. If we all start having this at the backdrop of our, our tourism investments, every African, I can tell you, can earn some job, can come out creatively to develop all the various cultural and natural tourist attractions. That, that is just one sector I want to have. Absolutely. Absolutely. The work that you're doing, um, um, Lewis, is phenomenal bridging the opportunity, showcasing what the opportunities are on the table for the diaspora. And when we say diaspora, we really want to be broad, Lewis. And I know you join with me in saying that it is people of African heritage, not just those directly connected to Africa by birth, by their grandparents or great grandparents, but those who have Africa in their heart and in their heritage that are looking for, for Africa to develop. I just really want to thank you and, and applaud you and the International Institute looks forward to continuing to support your work and partner with you in order to bring uh, that dream alive, especially in the various sectors. Wait for me, I want to come to you and talk to you about and have you share just a, what's right with Africa and what are the opportunities that we have on the table to bridge and connect those opportunities. Africa is full of resources, full of wisdom, full of people with know-how and technical stuff. Where and how does the diaspora come into that? So I think we can all agree that one of the biggest things that's right with Africa is the spirit of our people. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't see borders, it doesn't see 
national continents. Um, we see it in descendants of Africa who are part of the diaspora, whether they're voluntary or non-voluntary. Um, and I think the one thing that's right at this moment with Africa is the youth. Um, I think Ms. Carroll said earlier, the percentage of the youth population is around six, up to 65% um, of the total population. I think it's a direct reflection of the rest of the world. Um, the biggest thing that I see that's right is the possibility to really do it right, um, to do it led by our people, um, by the youth. And I think the diaspora, a lot of us want to go back home. I think a lot of us have touched on it. I live in the U.S. Um, I live in the D.C. area and I left my heart in Sudan. Um, I left my heart on the Nile River. And everything that I do now is to kind of be able to bridge that forward. So I do a lot of work um, on building coalitions, supporting community initiatives and grassroots led efforts, because that's that's where the success is from the bottom up. Um, a lot of the institutions and the infrastructure doesn't exist and it won't match the Western infrastructure capability. Yes. Um, we have to do it from a way, from a lens that's brand new, from a lens that not only sees the natural resources that are there, but continues to preserve them. Um, and as we do development, as we do agricultural initiatives, as we do techno technological advancements. Um, I think a lot, I work in the clean energy space, so I see an opportunity to create a grid across the whole entire continent that electricity is shared, you know, renewable electricity, renewable energy. Um, so I think the one thing that's right is our spirit can't be broken. Um, as we can see from the decades and centuries of the attempts to do that, we're all here gathered today. And I think I'm, I'm representing the youth here um, and telling you all that we're ready and we're eager and we just need, um, we need the trust and the support. And also we need to trust our elders and trust the women in our communities because we trust them in our societies and in our homes to lead and bring up our families. Um, and I think it's time now to take a step back and let us lead, um, find ways to let us lead. And if you need help, let, let, let me know. I'm more than happy to provide them um, suggestions on how that can happen. But I think what we're doing here right now is a great step in that right in direction. And I'm really grateful for you, Viola, for bringing us all together to be able to start the, these discussions, but then create action with them. Um, and that's what I do. I, I mobilize for action and I am excited to continue to do that with you all. Thank you so much, my sister. You have a comment here from the chat and it says, uh, wait for me, 100% uh, right, empowerment is needed. Also, youth are a critical driver if Africa is to transform. So you have people who are agreeing with what you're saying there and just really uplifting the conversation. And I too am a person who is looking to return home. I, I am looking to return to Africa. I am looking to return to a place where that I feel safe, I feel wanted. Um, United States is a great place, but as I look at the opportunities and, and that are available in a way that I can give in a way that makes sense, Africa is the place for me and finding the right country is the right place. When we talk about sustainable development, the International Institute of Family Development has an opportunity uh, with a solar manufacturing company and a wind uh, uh, energy company that is looking to engage with an African nation, one for market and two, to establish a production facility. We don't have many of those on the continent at all when we're talking about education, we're talking about jobs and training. These are real opportunities and, find, and using this network of mobilizers and movers and shakers like you all, we will find the right place to, to establish and start the opportunities of this entrepreneurial spirit that we have within us. Joseph, I have to come to you. What's right with Africa and what are the opportunities that we have before us in agriculture across the value chain line for people of African descent in the Caribbean and America and other places uh, can engage in? Oh, thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Um, number one, everything is all up from it's beautiful weather, sunshine we're given here in India. And so the weather is accommodating every single person. Our weather is also accommodating uh, for plants. 
and agriculture for agricultural production. Africa, again, is a beautiful continent because her people, her friendly people, very accommodative. Africa is great because 70% of her population is comprised of the youth, meaning that uh, the future of the earth is bestowed in Africa and in her people. Um, Africa, I think, is the second largest continent on earth with the second largest uh, population, again, globally. So it means that we're in a continent that is richly blessed by people. Our people are blessed. It's a, con a, co a, co I mean a continent um, that is agriculturally blessed. Now, let me go to specifics, the opportunities that we have here in Africa. Today, with a growing population of the earth, it means, therefore, that uh, the growing population must and has to be fed. Africa is still the continent that uh, has the potency and the potential of agricultural production. Our lands are fertile, and therefore, we can produce and feed every single human being or not. The second opportunity that we have here is that we still have an immense, I mean, immense opportunities of uh, doing business between the continent and people of the African descent. And actually, every human race that is, out, that is living outside Africa, that opportunity is there. Another opportunity that is there in the agricultural sector is to heal what has been destroyed. Let me take one minute to explain that. Um, today, I'm, I'm in the agricultural sector uh, through uh, uh, our private company, the International Institute for Research and Agricultural Development. In Kenya, uh, last year, we rolled out a project through which we want to work with 20,000 farmers across Kenya. Now, in our preliminary research, um, we are trying to investigate the reason as to why 60% uh, of our agricultural produce cannot be sold in, in Canada, cannot be sold in Ghana, cannot be sold in America, and cannot be sold in Germany. The reason is our soil has been polluted by fertilizers, synthetic fertilizers, that makes crops not fit for human consumption. So our soil is sick, it needs to be healed. Who is there to heal it? It is you and I to come together, come up with products that will enable us heal that soil so that we can be able to trade globally, but not only trading globally, so that we can be able to produce food that is fit for human consumption. Synthetic fertilizers synthetic fertilizer are here. We are using them. We are eating them. What are we doing to ourselves? We are killing ourselves here in the continent. We need a solution. That is an opportunity uh, for business. In the transport uh, sector, in the transport sector, we have opportunity in the transport sector. Where, uh, whereby 90% of uh, Cargo companies here are owned by, you know, either white men, I don't want to sound racist here, but again, how can we partner and work together to ensure that our products that are here are transported to us and by us? Allow me to pose another point. Uh, I don't want to take much of, the, much, much of our time, but we have great and immense opportunity of working together as a group. Absolutely. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to say yes, yes, and yes to everything that everyone has said and lifted up. There's a few things that we have talked about, about the opportunities, about the, there's an entrepreneur uh, opportunity available in transport and fertilizers and building networks. Uh, Mr. 
AFL is building a huge network right now uh, and strong, going strong. And there's a need for a fund development, for economic development. I'm going to ask Mr. Nijuan to come to this conversation. This is his wheelhouse, and then we'll follow up with Ambassador Ramjan and then move over to Ambassador Schmidt to really talk about the business aspects, the entrepreneurial aspects that are present for us, to give words of wisdom, uh, talk about synergies uh, to connect. And I think the third is to really outline uh, a person that has inspired you of African descent, that when you think about the opportunities, you're framing it in context of that person or persons that has really inspired you. Mr. Najewan, please come to this floor. Thank you, Viola. First of all, uh, uh, let me also answer your previous question of what's right with Africa. Um, you know, my, my sort of limited uh, experience in, in trips I've made, um, I would say what's right with Africa, first and foremost, is um, the African diaspora's understanding of why what it means to be human. You know, it's important to create wealth, but it's also important to create community, poetry, music, and all the things that, that you know, give us a reason to have that wealth. Let's not forget that. I would say that's probably uh, the most important um, yeah. sort of area of wealth of Afri the African diaspora. Absolutely. That, uh, look, I'm mainly focused in the science and technology realm. And um, we'll leave you a little story. When, when India got its independence in 1947 from the British, the British had, had left the country in a sorry state over 200 years, just like they have, you know, the, the colonial powers in Europe had left Africa in a sorry state. They'd left, you know, India in a very sorry state. The new leaders, you know, couldn't feed their population, but they set up institutions like the Indian Institute of Technologies, the IITs, that were sort of modeled on MIT. Mm -hmm. And 40 years later, the Indian diaspora in, in America took advantage of all those young people getting educated in India who didn't have opportunities and created the outsource IT software industry, which frankly uplifted India to its sort of current status. So I, I think there is a similar opportunity here with the African diaspora to uplift these the young talent that's in Africa today. And I believe it should be done in science and technology because in every one of these endeavors, whether it's agriculture or others, I think it's science and technology that's going to really make the difference. And, um, you know, Africa has an opportunity just like India does where when you start with no infrastructure, you have an opportunity to, to put in infrastructure that is of current technology. Just, you know, look, look at the cell phone networks, right? Cell phone networks have transformed Asia and Africa. Um, you know, I one of uh, uh, our NMIT students here in Boston went back to Kenya and started Nairobi Capital. Um, and they were able to do it by leveraging the M-Pesa uh, mobile money network. So, you know, so mobile mobile payments happened in Africa before they happened anywhere else. True. They <laughs> off in China. So, um, you know, I, I truly believe that the diaspora can get organized like the Indian diaspora did. You know, we, we have an organization called Thai started in Silicon Valley, second chapter in Boston, now 67 chapters around the world, that is very actively supporting entrepreneurs across the Indian diaspora. I think something similar can happen with the African diaspora to take advantage of the wealth of opportunity in Africa. Certainly, certainly. And as you think through um, a person or persons of 
uh, African history, current or in the past, Mr. Naishavon, who is someone that you lift up or inspires you? Oh, there are too many to mention. So, you know, uh, I, I'm with the state's venture capital group here in Massachusetts, and we're uh, exclusively focused on investing in Black, Latinx, and women entrepreneurs. And, you know, we have invested, uh, I, you know, one of, one of these entrepreneurs, uh, you know, gave me a phrase, which I repeat over and over again, which is, um, Black and Latinx entrepreneurs in the U.S. are over-mentored and undercapitalized. Couldn't so, say it better myself. And and so my goal in life and now Mass Ventures is to provide capital to these uh, you know to these entrepreneurs. Now we're you know let's be frank we're very focused on the top of the pyramid here. <laughs> so the entrepreneurs that we sort of backed are you know Colin Bowie who's a professor at MIT who's created a life sciences company called Kytopen that's just raised enormous amount of private capital. You know, Camille Martin, who just finished her PhD at Northeastern and has come up with, um, a, you know, I don't know if any of you have seen that movie recently, uh, My Octopus Friend, but octopi have this amazing ability to change the color of their skin. Yeah. And so that chemical they figured out is is actually very useful for other things. For example, it blocks UV, you know, ultraviolet. So so they developed a skincare company called C Spire, and uh, so we're just about to back them. Um, I could go on. I mean, there are so many amazing uh, entrepreneurs of African diaspora mm-hmm. that need to be capitalized, and that's sort of our focus now. Thank you so very much for sharing your story and your journey and what you're doing Um, and correlating that to the Indian experience, because as a people, humans have a shared experience and and connecting the opportunity that India saw in its strategy uh, in order to uplift this country through the youth is an opportunity. I think that's before us. I think for for this group. Um, it's important to know that we have friends uh, throughout the United States, throughout throughout the world, who will come together and lend their advice and their voice uh, to help shape the vision of creating the opportunity for Africa to to be uh, an economic powerhouse. I just want you to know, Mr. Nigerian, you are in my home state. I am from Boston. I am a Bostonian by blood, Roxbury for true. Uh, Just to let you know, uh, all things Boston rock and roll. So I'm so happy that you said yes to come to this conversation. This will not be the last of the engagement. It will continue. We'll find pathways to uh, plug in and provide support uh, to the networking that we're building here in order to build something impactful and dynamic. But I do want to bring uh, Ambassador Ramajan here to this conversation. The question on the table is both what is you know, right with Africa. And we talked about opportunities for uh, within various sectors from tourism to business opportunities such as transport fertilizer, agriculture development across the agribusiness spectrum. Coffee is on the table when we think about the opportunities of product that is being developed. But again, uh, the full value isn't being felt particularly by women, uh, youth, I do not look at agriculture as a sexy venture, as a sexy sector to get into, but it is the sector that will create you to be a billionaire if you're able to move forward well. I want to invite you to the conversation. And as I do, I want to lift up an audience's uh, remark here um, as Mr. Nigerman was speaking. And it said, networking across Africa is key in lifting trade and economic growth. So someone was agreeing with your thoughts there. Mr. Ramjan, please come to the conversation. Thank you very much, um, Viola. Viola. Uh, I've been, um, to answer the first question wholeheartedly, is the people, the people, the people. Wow. I traveled to Africa in the early, I would say it was about, was about 99, uh, at the invitation of then Prince, 
President Laurent de Vila. And um, it was a situation of finance, that sort of thing. They were just coming out of their civil war and um, the country was in a mess. When I got there, there was still smoke to be seen, fires, you know, still lighting in certain places and that. Mm -hmm. But they had me, you know, everywhere I went, you know, I was heavily, you know, under security, under all the vehicles. And I said, no, you know, that's not why I came here. You know, I want to hear, I want to hear, I want to know the people and that. And I've never, I've never seen a more resilient people than the African people. The country was tough. I remember sharing the, the, the foreign minister's waters while I was telling me they couldn't even have their biblical services and that and when they had it they had to do it in the dark and they had to do it quietly because if the soldiers heard them heard you know they would come in they would probably hurt them rape the book rape the book you know kill you know children things were that and i couldn't believe what i was hearing but when i went out you know you know the people i remember one time we were out there with an entourage and i saw a young lady with two children under a tree and it looks like she was asking for help and i said no we gotta stop you know I, I i don't this is not what i want we gotta stop 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 and i stopped them and um, i got out and the little french i know i spoke to her a little bit and i gave her some money because and i told her in french you know that um this is for the children you know buy milk you know for the children uh, and um, she tears and she's handing it back to me, to me, you know, because she was not about that. And I said, no, 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 no. I put it back and I said, and I said, this is for the children. And that's in love with that. And it's and people, it's people. And it, uh, I want to come, I want to come a bit also, also new Carol, Carol. And she was mentioned in, in some of the Mali, the 12,000 farmers and the agriculture. There. Ambassador Ram John, we're having a tough time hearing you. There's a lot of feedback on your uh, microphone, so it's it's very staticky and it's uh, echoing, a repetitive. So I'm gonna give you a moment to square yourself. I'm gonna, uh, with that, and so you can do that off camera. I will, I will help you to go off camera so that you can take care of that. And we'll end up having uh, Ambassador uh, Schmidt, uh, Smith to come to the conversation here. Welcome to the conversation. What words of wisdom do you have in this conversation that you can have for the opportunities that we have before us with uh, African people of African heritage, of the diaspora, and tell us what's right with Africa? I think you may be muted, Ambassador Smith. Ambassador, if you can hear me, you are muted. You're unmuted now. Let's try. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Cannot hear you. You're having an audio issue. Nope, can't hear you. So I'm, what I'm going to do is help you. I'm going to let you go off camera and settle your audio issue because you're having an audio issue. And we'll see if we can bring up Ambassador Davis, if Ambassador Davis is here. So you're still in this, you're still here in studio, but we're just going to remove you so you can get back to that. Ambassador Andrew, are you ready? Well, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping ah, this- Ah, you're much better. You're much better <laughs> now, right. fantastic. So as you think about the business opportunities that are available to the diaspora, you think about the opportunities that we have to bridge and make a connection. You're representing Trinidad and Tobago a country that is definitely connected both with Nevis and the West Indies, and I would safely make a really big assumption connected to the continent of Africa. What are the opportunities that you see before us for business development, uh, entrepreneurship? 
Well, well uh, thank you again. Um, I, I'm sorry about that in with the audio. The audio, um, I I'm corrected it, corrected it, I guess. Um, I was um, the, in the, inter, um, the problem stemmed when I was just ask, ask a Carol about, about the 12 farmers, farmers and the funding, funding situation. Uh, uh, the, and I am interested in something like that, you know, because my forte is really, really, um, um, I, I'm, really, I'm not someone who uh, gets into something because I want some hack. hack. I, I give to the people and all I want is the smiles back and the memories that I've shared with them. So that I'm interested in, and, and uh, that I, that I will, uh, you will probably see me. I would contact. I, I am traveling to Nevis in about weeks because I'm doing some business, doing some business with Hamilton Reserve Bank there. Uh, back to these same funding, funding of humanitarian projects, all of that sort of thing. Um, I don't know if the mic was working properly when I was telling you about my experience in Africa, in Africa to um, to um, Democratic Republic Congo. Oh, I was invited I, by. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And the focus of the question is what's right with Africa. We often hear about right. the war. We often exactly. hear about the poverty and the neglect. And DRC exactly. happens to be one place that I know for sure, because I have relationships there, that the people are resilient. The, uh, the minerals in the ground yes. are ph phenomenal. And yet there is great poverty. And when we think about what the opportunities are before us, wouldn't it be, wouldn't, can we just imagine that there is an opportunity between the West Indies and Nevis and Trinidad and Tobago and Sudan that we can figure out how to, those raw minerals that support the coltan that goes into the telephones and other devices and in the cars, electrical cars, how can we create a network of a manufacturing and production plant inside of country uh, and operationalize that by Africans with support of people of African heritage and those who care deeply about and friends of Africa for the development of that country. So this conversation here that we're having today is a conversation to lay out what the opportunities are. And then on the back end, after this networking event is to come together as a team, uh, contribute what we can, knowledge, wisdom, skills, network, and figure out what can we really put on the ground through a relationship with Africa and everyone else's organizations on this table. You know, to be honest with you, Ambassador Ramjohn, there is a uh, solar manufacturing company that I, my company, the International Institute, is in a relationship with. We specialize in making the dream come true for African nations. And that dream is to help them realize their national development plans. And those national development plans are focused in, on infrastructure development, energy, women, and youth. We have an opportunity before us, but what would that look like if we gathered together and created a network? Um, wind is a huge renewable energy that uh, that needs to take place, right? In an organized faction in the West Indies, lights out should not be occurring throughout the globe. Uh, it should not be occurring in nations where black and brown people live. And we need to figure out a way to make that happen and do good business. There's nothing wrong with doing good business and, and having an impact at the same time. So we are coming to a close here and I definitely wanted to see if we could bring Ambassador Karen Schmidt on before we do. Uh, it, are you there, Ambassador? Have you been able to fix your microphone? Can you hear me now? I can definitely hear you now. You are representing South Africa. Welcome. Thank you very much. So what is good in Africa? I am representing South Africa, but I still in some central areas on the continent. And we I have say, some feedback, Ambassador. Lots of feedback. Feedback. Yes. So try to come closer, closer if you can. Mic. Yeah, try to come closer to your mic. Is it, can you hear me now, clearly? We can hear you now much better, yes. So as I was saying, um, I've worked uh, in many countries in the continent because um, prior to being an ambassador, I was the international relations manager for the ruling party. And 
that afforded me an opportunity to work um, on a party political level and in other areas as well as um, conflict resolution within the Sudan and South Africa. Um, looking at Africa in general um, and the countries that I see, I would say, I would say the culture, the peace, um, the culture of people. Um, if you can just excuse me a second. So we have a comment on the screen that says from one of our uh, viewers, great to join this conversation. Lots of people are chiming in from all over the globe and just really uplifting all of you guys on the panel uh, talking about the knowledge, the skills, the abilities, the talents that they see here and bigging up, really giving high fives uh, and saluting uh, the conversation. So hats off to all of you guys for joining here. Ambassador, are you ready to come back on for your final comments and then Ambassador Davies? My final comments are, it's the humanity, it's the culture, it's the communal sense that we have amongst us. It is something that is unique and extremely special. And in that, when you look at business, I think we look at it from a very um, particular point of view because of education. But if you go down to ground level, where I do do um, some community work at home, <laughs> that happened, people weren't able to feed themselves. And we, we then started working with, we then started working with community members that already with the little that they had started feeding kitchens and now I started food gardening. So there is a lot that, that Africa has to offer. Now the African diaspora being the sixth region of the continent, there's a huge role to play. There's many areas you can plug into. There's the AU2063 agenda, which has outlined what we need. But if you even, um, I would encourage more of you to actually come back, come to the continent and see what is already happening, plug into those areas and work with those who have already started um, with the inter-trade, which is the most important thing. Inter-trade, we're always talking about um, how to export abroad. But amongst ourselves, there's a lack of, 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 and I'm so glad on this platform that we have people moving, moving in that area. And we our niche on how do we actually trade our goods across board. And in that space also, look at, in the security is a huge issue. So, the value chain, added addition becomes of paramount importance. And how these um, up emerging companies that get to the technology needed to grow the necessary for commercial and um, local use and household use, as well as how do we assist them to create access to markets? Because networks is something that is Thank you very much. Absolutely. I, I love that you really uplifted Mr. Afful's network, his APAN network. All of us need to be a part of that network and supporting others. And I'm going to do my job as a good sister and support others to connect to APAN and connect to us as a team together to figure our way forward. Having a list of opportunities that are vetted that are on the ground, ready for engagement, and also providing the opportunities for tours. I want to bring um, Ambassador Hillary uh, to the to Davies to the conversation in Liberia, representing the youth. Because with without this, right, both Way for May and uh, Hillary representing the youth, we cannot have a conversation. It would be unbalanced, unfair, and uh, antiquated. To be quite honest with you. So with that, uh, Ambassador Davies, it, Liberia just had its bicentennial. 
Uh, there's a special relationship between Liberia and the United States, uh, particularly Maryland, the state that I am currently residing in right now um, uh, with uh, colonialism and, and those descendants uh, that were removed forcibly from the continent. And Liberia is undergoing like Ghana, a few years ago, Ghana underwent the year of return. I was in Ghana way before it became popular. I uh, just want to happen to mention that. And uh, they're undergoing Liberia land of return. Uh, right now, there's a huge initiative that your president and others are moving forward, inviting the diaspora back home for business engagement and development and retirement and all the like. And tourism happens to be a huge sector. You have mobilized youth across Africa uh, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and others. Talk about the opportunities that are right for the diaspora to get involved with in the diaspora throughout, not only just in America. Welcome to the conversation. Thank you Ambassador. very much. I am thinking as to whether you are getting me clearly. Can you hear me? Yes. Thumbs up. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Well, let me start by thanking you and the International Institute for Family Development for inviting me to have this dialogue with uh, these wonderful people. And uh, permit me to thank all of you wonderful people for that we were able to make, we are able to make our time to, to converge on this platform in, comm in commemoration of the, the Black History Month. And at the same time to identify or showcase income generating areas in coffee or agriculture in, in, in along the value chain. Uh, basically what I what I'm involved with, I work with for uh, Helping Hand International, is an humanitarian uh, youth humanitarian organization that cross sources humanitarian activities all across the world. So basically we've just had uh, the second edition of our empowerment, our youth empowerment summit in Sierra Leone at Bentumani Hotel, where we were talking about rewriting the history of Africa and providing opportunities for the youths in Africa and across the world. So basically that's what I am into. On the other hand, uh, I am an extremely talented playwright, pianist and guitarist who has used my talent over the years to impact people with young people from various walks of life with uh, music, dance, and theatrical lessons. Yeah, so basically that's what I'm actually involved with and that's what I've been doing. Fantastic, and what are the opportunities that you see for, for engagement in Liberia? For example, uh, Firestone was a huge uh, manufacturing company in Liberia and su subsequently, you know, pulled out for various reasons during the war and many, uh, the, uh, a large um, company, multinational company, hasn't really gone back in. I mean, when we're looking at people around the table here, all of the nations here have undergone some sort of, their nations, their home nations have undergone some sort of change. Uh, and this change has affected the ability to be able to provide, there's no jobs. How can the diaspora come together? What are the opportunities that you see with this panel as a young person, you know, to create opportunity within your country? Yeah, the first thing on uh, the first thing to to to, to create as an opportunity is uh, in education. You know, you find out that most uh, young people in Liberia are not are going to school. In fact, they, they are roaming the streets and there's a big prospect for youth uh, in, in terms of uh, they are taking drugs and having some late nights stealing robbery activities. So the, the first thing is education. The first thing that I would uh, suggest or submit to us in terms of Liberia development agenda from this platform would be education, number one. Education is key. Fantastic. Fantastic. I couldn't say that better. There's many Can things that are on. Absolutely. There's many things here that we have discussed today. You have a big hand clap. So there's a round of applause from the audience uh, to all of you guys. And that is there upon the screen. So you guys can see that people are supporting what the conversation that you're having here. I really want to thank you. Thank you for your time. 
Thank you for your interest. Thank you for the opportunity to share your wisdom and your knowledge. What's next? That's most important. Conversation is good, but we have a mobilizer here on the team. We have a technology person here on the team. We have business and finance here on the team. We have a person here who has organized a network of focus on movement throughout Africa, of the, con the African continent of free trade agreement. Uh, we have people here, right here on this team. We have Joseph at, who is doing a huge amount of work in research and development uh, and looking at business opportunities opportunities. So, and our keynote speaker working as a collective together for those who are interested is the next step working with Afraka to make the next opportunity come real. The sector that we engage in, it will be up to us, but it looks fruitful that agriculture is teeming with opportunity. Tourism is another that is teeming with opportunity. And that is what's on the table. That's what's next for us to continue. So I'm going to give uh, my thoughts about what's beautiful and what's right with Africa. For all of you who have come from Africa with African heritage or blood, or come from places that understand the impacts of colonialism, you are what's right in this world. And I wanna thank you for saying yes to coming and having this conversation and joining me. There's no other group of people that I would have wanted to, um, to be with today. So I give thanks so much to you all. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.